Okay, um, welcome everybody to this webinar and uh, thank you for joining. So today we will talk about the viability of RI and open science. And um, so my name is Helene Brinken and I will start uh, with a general introduction about the Fit for RI project and a short definition of what is RI and what is open science. And afterwards, Haro van Lente um, from the Maastricht University, he's a professor um, of science and technology stu studies there, will present uh, the work of Fit for RI's um, sectoral diagnosis on the vari variability of RI and open science. And I would like to start with some housekeeping remarks. Um, so um, you can type all the questions you have in the chat and we will have time after the presentations to answer them. And um, we will share, of course, the slides and the recordings on the Foster portal and also on the Fit for I website. And um, yes, I hope you can hear me well. If, there, if you face any um, technological problems, let us know via the chat and we will try to help you there. So, um, Yes, I will start, as I mentioned, with a, a short introduction. Um, so what is the Fit for RI project? So Fit for RI is an acronym for Fostering Improved Training Tools for Responsible Research and Innovation. So what is responsible research and innovation? We all know that science and technology can create risk and ethical dilemmas. Therefore, uh, our I seeks to bring uh, research and innovation into the open to anticipate consequences and to involve the society. Societal actors such as researchers, citizens, policymakers, um, businesses or NGOs work together during a research process to better align um, the processes and outcomes with values, needs and expectations of society. So in short, it means that um, RI means to involve all stakeholders at all levels to minimize the potential negative impact of research and innovation. Um, so there have been de developed many definitions, um, which each of which uh, emphasizes different components. And uh, we've summarized here a few, so RI, um, can mean mutual responsiveness between uh, innovators and social actors. Um, it can mean responsibility for the future impacts of research and innovation, and it can mean um, alignment, alignment to research and innovation process and in out, it outcomes to values, needs, and expectations of the society, or it can mean reflexivity on the moral acceptability of new technologies and innovation. Um, more practical, RI um, can be seen as an umbrella concept. So um, it includes different key criteria and also conceptual dimensions. So on this slide, you can see the key criteria um, that it includes, so such as gender equality, um, an ethical dimension in the research uh, process and content, then open access to research results, um, formal and informal science education, and also public and societal engagement, and um, governance, so aiming at creating models uh, for the these other five components and more recently also the key criteria sustainability and social justice social, social justice or inclusion have been added to this concept um, so the conceptual dimensions um, you can see here so diversity and inclusion um, for example, means that you involve as early as possible a wide range of actors to strengthen the democracy and also to broaden your sources of expertise, uh, different disciplines and different perspectives. Then RI also means to be anticipative and reflective. 
So you can envision the impacts and reflect on the underlying assumptions and values and, and the purposes. So to try to see how your research um, would affect the future. Then one other conceptual dimension is to be open and transparent. So it means to communicate the methods and the results and inclusion and to enable dialogue with the public. And the last conceptual dimension is uh, responsiveness and to be adaptive to change. So this means that you are able to modify um, your modes of thought and behavior according the circumstances or the feedback you get from including societal actors. Um, so this is uh, the definition of RI and uh, I also have um, a definition of open science a bit shorter now. Um, so we took the definition from the Foster website, so the, which says that open science is a practice of science in such a way that others can collaborate, contribute, because the research data, the lab notes, and all other research processes are freely available. Um, and the terms under which they are available allow the reuse, the redis redistribution, and the reproduction of the research. So, and in short, we can say it's the movement to make scientific research data and dissemination accessible to all levels of an acquiring society. And um, yeah, here is just a, a picture of the four fundamental rules of open science. So, um, transparency, um, accessibility, available and free and uh, reusable. So, just to illustrate this in short. And um, now I would like to take a few minutes to talk about the Fit for RI project. Um, so we are a project um, where with a consortium of 12 partners from nine countries and um, we have one more year to go. So we started in 2017 and um, the project moves um, from the assumption that there's a serious gap between the potential role that our I and open science could play in the research environment and that they actually play. So there is a potential for improvement in that sense. And fit for our eyes intended to help mainstream our I and open science um, through transforming them into um, a set of strategies and means. So, um, we work uh, towards two uh, key objectives. So to bridge this gap and activate institutional change. One of them is training and the other one is governance settings. And um, we, um, have, yeah, we have three strand, uh, strands to, uh, that we work on. So um, the first strand is the analytical strand. So we want to understand which trends, barriers, drivers, interests, and values influence the adoption of our I and open science. And for example, also do sectors and national contexts play a role? And then we uh, work on yeah, a testing strand. So we observe our I and open science in action. Uh, and how we do this is that we um, conduct for co-creation experiments to figure out um, possible solution in terms of training approaches and governance settings to see what works and what doesn't. And then the uh, third strand is um, the proactive strand about promotion and sharing. So we want to promote changes, um, develop training tools and evidence-based guidelines and governance settings. So um, just um, quickly, so what we've uh, done so far and what we are currently working on. So in the analyt analytical strand, the first activity was a mapping and benchmarking process with the key question, why is RI less widespread, accepted and embedded in research organization than it was expected? And um, in order to analyze the diffusion and embedment of our I and open science and to map these general trends and barriers. Um, our approach was to do a literature review and uh, a set of focus groups and a benchmarking exercise. 
And the result of this was uh, 142 um, um, yeah, deliverable report on the literature review. Um, but so what we tried here is to summarize this a bit. So we created these uh, graphics. So um, you can see here on the left hand side, the critical trends shaping signs, such as hypercompetition or increasing pressure in assessment systems or the increasing mobility of researchers. On the right hand side, right -hand side we have some barriers uh, of RI and open science, so which can be, for example, resistance to change or the uncertainty about the concept or, for example, lack of training. And uh, here you can see um, um, drivers of RI and open science. So how can RI and open science be moved forward? So these can be political, economic or social, technological and or environmental. And there are seven different ways um, to interpret it, uh, our eye and open science, so perspectives, uh, how to see it. So you can, for example, uh, look at our eye from a demo democratic perspective, or you can see our eye as an opportunity or um, for management or to better align the values of society and research. And uh, the report and the literature review and also these um, um, like visual graphic summary are available online. So here we uh, include the links. And if you want to learn more about this um, mapping and benchmarking exercise, we already had one webinar about that. Um, so um, you can yeah, access the link and uh, watch the recording. Um, um, yes, so that's for the analytical part and um, in addition to that we've also um, conducted or we are conducting for co-creation experiments as I mentioned to observe our eye and open science in action. So four of our partners um, yeah, uh, organizing these um, experiments where they uh, um, have focus groups and interviews um, to yeah, engage with their environment, with the research uh, institute in their research institution, and um, so an experiment can yeah can be uh, described as an exercise of engaging different actors, so the quadruple helix actors, which are university, industry, policymakers, and society, into the design. Uh, of a research project and this is how we want to understand uh, how institutions need to change their organizational frameworks and to allow better RI embedment and to provide an enhanced value for the uh, actors. So you can find more uh, information on that on our website and we will um, have a blog post of each about each of the experiments uh, in the coming weeks. So stay tuned and we will um, yeah, post that on Twitter and share it with you. And also we will have another webinar about the experiment for sure. So then uh, in terms of activities, we've also done, uh, in terms of training, we've done a content mapping and meta analysis of the training materials that are already out there. So my colleagues created an integrated RI and open science taxonomy, and we are collecting our eye training materials on the foster portal um, so you can uh, go there and you also can now uh, um, get notifications if there are new uh, resources so um, this is also mentioned in a blog post on our website and yes uh, today we will uh, learn about the um, part the second part of our uh, understanding strand the analytical strand which was a sectorial diagnosis about the variability of RI in open science. And I would like now to uh, pass on the word to Haro van Lente. I stop sharing now. And yeah, so I will. And I think you can yeah, start sharing your screen. Perfect. Yeah, 
So thank you very much, uh, Helen. That was uh, helpful to um, remind us all wh why we all did this, these studies. I'm Haro von Lenz. I'm professor of science and technology studies at Maastricht University and one of the researchers in this uh, consortium. And the research I will report on today is uh, starting from this very uh, commonsensical idea that when you are concerned about responsible research and innovation at open science, it probably matters what kind of sector you're working in or are concerned about, and also the, the, the country you're working in. So things are different in, in different places and in different disciplines, in different economic sectors. So let's have a look at that. So <clears throat> the key questions uh, in the research I will report on is are twofold. One is, how can we see the different uh, variations across sectors, national contexts, and maybe also other factors that matter in terms of uh, variation, because responsible research innovation is not just one monolithic um, uh, movement. It comes in various forms and with various questions, with various ambitions. So let's have a look at that. It's very useful to know that before you start doing experiments and uh, developing tools. So that's one thing. The other thing, second question, is to provide a bit of a background. Can we understand these variations and what factors help, help in, in shaping the variations? So these are the two questions. And in this research, we build on some shared ground that is um, that we covered in the whole Fit for RRI project, which is this. These are these five analytical interests um, that we are interested in the general trends and uh, also the first webinar on uh, the dynamics in science systems was focusing on this. So we contribute to that as well. The question what is happening um, in the different uh, disciplinary and research sectors. Secondly, these barriers. So can we understand what withheld, withheld people from uh, joining RRI or to discuss it and what kind of institutional opportunities are there to uh, address it better? Um, the drivers, so how do these concerns come in, in play? How do they uh, steer the developments and the discussions and what differences do we see there? Fourthly, uh, the interests and values. So there are dif typically different values at play when you are discussing, say, biotechnology or ICT. So let's have a look. What, what is at play there? And finally, um, so do we know of some good examples of, of um, where experience, we have successful experiences um, that could be a model or a benchmark for other uh, attempts? Okay, so that is a sort of general introduction why we do this and how we, we see it. So then I will focus now on the sectors that we feel were important to explore. So we decided that at the beginning of the project. The first sector is um, sustainable energy with, and that's of course a very broad category. So we focused, uh, if possible, uh, on uh, zero emission innovation in the built environment. So zero emission built houses. Um, that is an attempt that is now going on in various places. So it's partly scientific research, but also sort of uh, hands-on innovation. Secondly, material science, which is a bit more remote from actual innovations. It's more research oriented. Um, although, and we focused here on coatings, there you see also industrial activities on say nano coatings and new coatings that help to improve the performance of materials. Uh, the third sector, ICT, information communication technologies, and uh, that is of course very visible in terms of big data. Um, the fourth one, probably very different, is biotechnology. Again, a very broad category, so we focused here on stem cell research and personalized medicine. Um, we did this in various countries, so not all countries focus on both, so then we have an option to have either of these two. Um, and the last one, uh, photonics, 
where we focused on blast fiber technologies and uh, new light electronic chips. So the enhancement of uh, also data communication, but also additional features and um, uh, performance. So these are five very different sectors where you would expect differences in terms of open science and responsible research. So then how did we do this in, in this research? Uh, actually two steps. Um, step one is going to the literature. We are not the first one exploring this. There have been some uh, thoughts, experiments, uh, experiences. And so we looked for the promises in, in these sectors, the concerns, whether there are reports about societal engagement in these five sectors. And um, that was then uh, ended in month six. Then we continued and to elaborate, deepen, and check these findings in uh, workshops in five countries. So we had uh, researchers in these countries and they all developed their own uh, workshops with the various uh, sectors. And these five countries, you see them on the screen, Norway, Italy, Portugal, Finland, Netherlands, so what nice spread across Europe. And again, we focused here on promises of the field, the concerns about the field and the societal engagement. And uh, yeah, so we really uh, were able to, uh, to, to, to do that and to work according to plan. Uh, it depends a bit on this on the on the local situation, so sometimes we have to improvise with the timing, but okay, this is what we could achieve. So we ended with uh, a, a conclusion, we integrated it, and uh, Helene pointed to the uh, reports that are now available. But I will continue with uh, some a bit more how we did the literature review. So, uh, I won't go through this all, but just to show you that something like literature is used not just uh, opening a Google Scholar and then you have all the results. It's really you go through it through several rounds and discuss what is important, what is salient, what to select, and how to uh, deepen. So we have in the consortium various rounds of uh, meetings uh, in between reporting and uh, presenting drafts, comments, and so on. Um, also with the workshops, this is a bit more, um, uh, yeah, so, so this is also a bit more, more sensitive that you really do the same things, otherwise it's difficult to compare. So we set together to prepare a format of the workshop. This was done by our Norwegian colleagues. We tested the format and all these five different countries then um, developed the format according to their own. Uh, possibilities and ambitions and um, so we shared the information we commented upon the findings and we also could prepare the end result in, uh, in a report so um, that is how we did this some notes about um, the participants if you look at all the workshops together in all these five countries you can see well there are quite a few representatives from both research and industry in these five countries and also these five sectors. So um, 43 sounds like a lot, yet if you look in detail, you will also conclude this is not the way to do statistics. These numbers are too low to have significant variations in statistical ways, yet it is very useful to, um, well, to have more qualitative insights into the discourse, the arguments and the concerns that circulate in these various um, groupings. So they are very helpful for the challenges and the chances of RRI and open science in these uh, RFPOs, the research funding and performing organizations. So it's, it's, it's a good result. I will present some of the results now. The um, literature review uh, focused on these five sectors and um, what we can say first about sustainable energy that it's it's promising it's it's quite a long-lasting promise already uh, sustainability is, is is discussed for a long time seen as very important as responsible also to address it so 
Interestingly, it's almost automatically seen as responsible research if you focus on sustainable energy. Um, so that's hardly contested. And you also see that because it's hardly contested that all the established actors, so the big uh, uh, research groups on, on energy and also the, cons the uh, organizations focusing on building, they really position themselves and they show to the world, look, I am good, I am providing responsible innovation because I am focusing on sustainability. So that is the promise that is there and, and also the, the possibility to position yourself to these promises. So that is a setting that is important to keep in mind if you do uh, responsible research innovation, that there is this promise around and that people really would like to connect to it. The situation is different in the second case of material science, of new coatings. It's hardly a promise. It's societally less visible. It's something nobody really reads about a lot. It's not so much in the news. It is uh, an emergent industry, but yeah, it's mostly research and science. And also, we saw that when there is responsible research innovation discussed, it's mostly through research and science policy. And the researchers themselves are much less involved with it. Also, the institutions are much less involved with it. Something that is more top down because we are concerned about RRI and OS in general, so also in this case. With uh, the third case, ICT, what we found in the literature that, again, this is visible societally, uh, the promise of ICT, but also the concerns. Uh, probably you all know about these discussions about big data, about algorithms, about artificial intelligence. Um, so that is, it's not artificial to discuss it. People see it as natural to do that. So that, is, that helps uh, if you launch the idea of RRI in this sector. Yet, what is also um, uh, uh, striking in this sector is that it's quite a mature one with very big players that already earned a lot of money, uh, have, have quite a, a strong societal position, also connections with politicians. So it's not so easy to really change things as, um, Yet, uh, sometimes the concerns can, can, can get re really big. Well, think of the uh, concerns about Facebook. Um, then, indeed, even parliaments start to uh, raise those questions. So, it's, it's really a bit a different game in this sector. Biotechnology, uh, the fourth one in the literature, uh, we found that it's already quite a long tradition of discussion. Uh, also because it's quite intimate to the human body and to reproduction and to maybe changing um, animals and plants. So the idea of playing God, is that something that we should do or not? But it also relates to questions of solidarity in the health system. Um, so there are quite some uh, discussions already going on. So RRI can really step into that. Um, Yet, what is a sort of barrier in this sector is that there is quite a distance with, between the researchers doing all kinds of experiments and reporting about it and the applications. So the researchers don't feel they are related to all these ethical outputs because they are just doing some research in the, in the, in the lab and it's not so clear how that ever could enter the, the personal lives of people in all kinds of societies. So finally, um, how, how it is in photonics, um, that is not so much visible like material science, yet it is partly an ingredient of the data-driven knowledge society, so it's part of this promise of, uh, well, knowledge economy, but also with the same concern as, as big data can have, so what, what is happening? Does it really serve the purposes of, of well-being? And you see that it's also mature that there are power asymmetries in the digital infrastructures. So strong players can really have a strong say in what should happen and what should be on the agenda. So that is also, uh, well, the grounds that is different in these, uh, these sectors. So it's really important to know if you do experiments, if you are working in these sectors, that the whole game is different. So that is a clear result from the literature review. 
Then about the workshops, we could verify these various findings, yet we could also uh, change and, and, um, and, and probe whether national differences were important, not on a systematic statistical way, but in terms of the discourse and the way people talk about it and feel their position. Uh, well, we saw there are quite some differences in terms of institutions. So some countries have dedicated institutions working on these issues, on technology assessments, on the role of technology in society. So the Netherlands has the Ratenau Institute working on this, and there's a strong institution in Norway on this, whereas others have other institutions mainly um, well, mainly trying to convey the, the good things of science in society, so more at communication and outreach and less on discussion. So that's a national difference. What also is very different are these funding systems. So, uh, for instance, in the Netherlands, there is uh, responsible innovation is now part of the funding scheme, and you can you can launch your proposal in those schemes and it's quite visible that it is a topic whereas in other systems of research there is not so much visibility of this so that is that is also a difference what is less different is how researchers and industries relate to these issues then the the um, the sectors are more more important so it doesn't really matter someone in portugal or in norway talking about bio industry as a biotechnology, they really have the same kind of concerns, the same kinds of strategies and outlooks. And um, yeah, so then the sectoral differences uh, take over. And these, um, well, if I can summarize, if these, so what you remember from the five sectors we discussed, what matters most is, is how the promises of the research are visible, and whether they are seen by the wider public, what matters also the links to the industry, whether there is a mature industry with very clear uh, stakes or not, and also whether it resonates with concerns in the wider public, whether people have the idea this is something that they should be concerned about or whether it sounds like a remote and uh, not very prominent concern. Okay, so if we then look at some other factors, um, that are important here. Um, that is what we really were, we were, what was striking in the workshops in all countries, that the participants truly care about responsible innovation and open science. So the whole premise of this Fit for IRI consortium project is that there is a gap between what RRI could do and what it actually delivers. What we found that it's not so much on the uh, the participants themselves are to blame. They are really they really care about that their research is helpful for society and that they contribute to a better society. So that is that is not contested. What the problem is is how this then should be related and how you could see this in in your research how to, how and when to address it and. Um, yeah, so what we also found is that this language of um, responsible research innovation is not always in this, yeah, it's not, not always taken up. Some research, researchers were even offended when you talk about responsible research and innovation because that seems to imply that before they were just doing something which might be irresponsible, whereas they say, well, we've always been responsible. How come that you now say we should become responsible? We've, we've done, done that always. So uh, please change your concepts here. Um, so that is something to, to take in, into consideration that it's not seen as an accusation, but as an opportunity to really uh, go further with the same ambitions. And these researchers have these ambitions to be good for society. So what we also found is that indeed, and that it links up with the, the, our first work package, the overview of the science system and its uh, conditions, that there are so many challenges. So people are pressed on all accounts and um, the economic interests are strong 
And um, so, yeah, it's, it's quite a tough world and people have to uh, run many races at the same time and compete different competitions at the same time. Um, there were also in these workshops some very nice suggestions already, for instance, how to include industry and how to, for instance, to be in pre-competitive uh, uh, areas of research. And um, so these were taken on board and these are useful for the further experimentation. You can find more of these in the report. And the last, um, the last note is a sort of a struggle for, for this project, but probably anyone who is interested in responsible research innovation is how to relate to industry. Because on the one hand, industry is by also by governance seen as well, it's it's a good user, it's a supporter, it's a partner. A researcher in, in the university really would like to stress its uh, its its relevance by pointing out how much industry is interested in its research. Um, but we also found, and that's the other side of, of the relationship to industry, that industry can become quite directive. We saw that with ICT. When industry has a, it's, it's quite mature, they know what to expect from researchers and they just delegate some of their questions to, to universities and uh, say, well, this is the puzzle you should solve now and we will pay you for it. But then the universities more or less become a sort of consultancy and less of a free space to uh, investigate. On the other hand, it shows the interest and the relevance, but is it really free research? Is it critical? So that is a difficult relationship. And uh, that is probably, um, well, uh, also uh, an important condition for any further attempts on ROI and open science. Okay, I go to the, to the last slide. Um, can we get some general lessons here? Um, well, to continue with, with the last point, relating to industry, it's, it's really important, but it's ambiguous. On the one hand, it helps to connect to society, but it can be quite directive on its own. Secondly, if you think about public engagement, uh, the temptation, and depends a bit on the country, but it is to, to have a one-way communication just to see it as explaining that everything is okay and everything is nice, instead of connecting and try to understand what concerns could be. And uh, so there is a tradition here, for instance, in, uh, in, in uh, GMO uh, research, genetic modification of organisms, the idea was for a long time industry that we should just explain that everything is safe and uh, you should not worry, whereas the concern of the public was something else. They were concerned, okay, if you start experimenting with this in food and, and in health, who is getting the benefits and who is getting all the profits and why should we con continue with this? Why should we be the guinea pigs of you? And that's another, that's not so much about safety, but that's about fairness. So that is showing that public engagement is important, not just to get support, but also to, 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 to make sure you are addressing the right agenda. Um, then point uh, three, the target and route. So um, it's, you can focus on the research ethics. Um, so that is then focusing on the individual researcher should do that, but that's not sufficient. You should also connect with broader views of where things are heading and what the stakeholders need. So you should both um, keep in mind and not restrict your interests to ethics alone. Um, point four of general lessons, we didn't think so much about this before, but afterwards you would say, yes, this is really important. That's the time frame. So are you talking about short term? Uh, gains or risks or long-term gain risks. So um, that is really, and that matters, that really is, is uh, an important uh, question to ask whether you're interested in open science and responsible research. And fourthly, um, that's something how to phrase it, how to frame it, how to continue with it. Is it revolutionary or is it all already something that we are concerned with uh, 
uh, for a long time. I told you about these researchers being offended by presentations that said, well, we now do something completely new. We focus on responsibility. And then they said, well, we do that all our careers already. So please don't blame us. On the other hand, if you say, well, we continue with responsible innovation and we did that always already, that's also not a contentious point to raise attention because then, yeah, it's business as usual. Why should you give it a, a try? It's, so it's not completely usual. It's, it's trying to step up and improve, but it's um, building on attempts and ambitions that have been already there. Okay, so this is what I would like to share about the... Uh, the research we did, we did in the uh, work package two on the literature review and on the workshops. And um, I think this gives, gives a good overview of the variations in sectors and countries, especially sectors. And uh, this should be a good stepping stone for further studies. And of course, I'm also interested to hear some questions or um, queries about further uh, interests of, of the audience out there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Haro. Yeah. Um, and yes, everyone, uh, everybody who has a question, please just type in the chat. So far, I don't think there are any, but we'll wait a few okay. minutes. So there is um, one question. Did you find any particularly successful approaches to training and open research? Any particular? Um, we were not so, um, not so much interested in these trainings, no. So um, I think it's too, too early. What we have seen is um, good examples of discussions. So, we saw in the Netherlands a good example of discussions on, uh, on the data society, and that raises questions about, uh, uh, about privacy and about reliability. Uh, but training is, um, was, was less developed. So um, no, I'm not, uh, I cannot give um, a good answer to that one. Thank you from that uh, person. Okay. okay. So someone else says, thank you for sharing the learnings. And Good. yes, so I think we'll just uh, stay online a couple of more minutes, but just to let you know, we will share the recording of this and also the slides. Um, yeah. We'll um, put it on the Foster portal and then we will um, share the links uh, yeah, via the Fit for Our Eye website and our social media channels. So, um, and also for the people who registered, we will send it out. <clears throat> so there are just a lot of thank yous here. So, um, oh, okay. <laughs> I would say also thank you from our side for joining us and for presenting Haro and um, yep. good. we hope that it was useful and valuable and uh, we will see you in the next webinar.
Okay, thank you very much. And if people are still having additional thoughts after some time, they can always approach us or me. And uh, so I'm willing to, uh, well, to share. And um, well, thank you, Helen, for then uh, guiding and uh, leading us through this uh, webinar. And uh, yeah, so that was it. <laughs> yes, thank you. Goodbye. Okay. Goodbye.